In perhaps 78 AD, during the time of Agricola, a Roman fort of four acres was built on what was the frontier of Roman Britain. It was named Lavatre, meaning riverbed. The earliest defences of this fort were of soil revetted with timber, but these were later replaced by stone. It was abandoned in the reign of Theodosius between 379 and 395. The Roman road that it lay next to, now the A66, was strategically important during the entire medieval period. To protect this route, Alan de Bretagne, the Count of Brittany, in 1138, built an earth and timber ringwork and bailey castle in the northwest corner of the Roman fort. This castle was inherited by his son Conan, and upon his death in 1171, was claimed by Henry II for the crown. Because of concerns of the growing military threat from Scotland, and of the Great Revolt in 1170. Henry II had a new castle built on the site under the supervision of the Count of Brittany's local tenants at a cost of nearly £600. This new castle featured a three-storied stone hall some 50 feet high. A ditch formed an inner defensive bailey with the ramparts of the old Roman fort forming a larger outer bailey. The village of Bowes was built after the castle was completed as a planned site and was complete with a church and a marketplace. The Great Revolt against Henry's rule involved a coalition of barons with support from the King of Scotland and some European allies. William the Lion pushed south from Scotland in 1173 and Bowes Castle was damaged in the raids. Repairs were made to the chamber and gates and bulwarks were constructed around the keep in anticipation of further incursions. In 1174, William of Scotland besieged the castle, but he was forced to retreat after the arrival of a relief force by Geoffrey, the Bishop of Lincoln. In 1203, King John gave control of Bowes Castle to Robert de Vieuxpont, and John himself stayed at Bowes in 1206. while in 1212 it was used briefly to hold John's niece, Eleanor of Brittany, who had been placed under the custody of Vieuxpont. In 1228, Henry III granted it to William de Blockley and Gilbert de Kirkton, but in 1232 it was given to Duke Peter of Brittany and then to William de Valence. In 1241, Bowes was given to the Earl of Richmond. It was to remain in the hands of the Earls of Richmond until 1322, by which time it was in a poor state of repair. Edward II then gave Bowes Castle to John de Scargill, at which point the local tenants of the Earl of Richmond rebelled and attacked the castle, looting and burning a part of the hall. Conflict with Scotland led to further raids against the castle and the surrounding manor. The neighbouring fields were abandoned and by 1340 the castle was in ruins and the manor worth nothing. In 1361 it was reclaimed by the crown. By 1444 it was controlled by the Neville family but reverted back to the crown again in 1471 when Neville fell from grace. James I sold the castle in the early 17th century. The remaining fortifications were largely dismantled in the mid 17th century after the English Civil War. Okay, we're going to go inside. As the sign says, we're taking every care. Inside it's a bit of a shell, but as you can see, originally divided into two parts. There's a doorway arch there, the remains of the wall going across. And we'll turn around. And of course, another one's wonderful little sign. So there, so we won't. Up there, there's still a bit of the second story remaining, and that's accessed over there. So let's go up there as well. Before we go up, there we go, there's the steps going up to one of these nice little lancelet windows. Nice little arrow slit up there. As you can see, this has been redone. You've got the original stone there and then modern steps going up joining in and up and up and up and up and up so let's go up and of 
unfortunately, this is as high as you can get. But it does give you a rather nice view of parts of the inside of the castle. What you can actually see is that the spiral staircase went all the way up to parts that are long gone. Another defensive window over there and one over there which lets light in so you can see where you're going. All in all, Bose is one of these forgotten little gems. Very pretty little castle, this. At least this is one of these nice broad spiral staircases, unlike some of the places which are tiny. Little architectural feature, that's one of the springers which would have gone over and made a nice vaulted ceiling. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to show you the ditch. And over here, just outside the castle, you have the graft of the ditch. And as you can see, going all the way along, I'll just pan into the corner. And we'll go for a walkie down there and you can see what that looks like. around the corner. <clears throat> and that is Bose Castle. Right, I thought I'd give you a couple of long shots. Just so you can see what this actually looks like. I'll we'll pan in there and you can see the gateway coming through from Barn from Bose itself. And that's the staircase going up to the window. And that's Bose Castle. <laughs>